Ubisoft's in big trouble as their stocks are dropping, their games are flopping, and now their last ditch hope for the year with Assassin's Creed Shadows has been a giant mess, as you all know, and I've covered at length. But who's to blame here, right? It can't be the fact that Ubisoft isn't making their fans happy and that they're producing trash and uh, that they, they just totally fell off. No, it couldn't be that. It's the fans, of course. The fans are the problem and they attack the fans just recently. So again, again, let's go ahead and cover this coming to us from that park place. Ubisoft runs to New York Times to attack players in defense of Assassin's Creed Shadows. It's their only hope. And, you know, they couldn't have fixed the game. They couldn't have fixed the issues everybody had with it. No. They're going to blame the fans because that's going to work out well. Now it's going to sell super well. Oh, I'm sorry, Ubisoft. I was the problem the whole time. You're telling me that? Hold on. Let me get my pre-order in right now. French video game developer, excuse me, Ubisoft ran to the New York Times in order to attack its own players in an attempt to salvage its upcoming Assassin's Creed Shadows game. In a play straight out of Prime Video's playbook for The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, oh my gosh, talk about a nightmare with that, Ubisoft leveraged Zachary Small and The New York Times, as well as a so-called expert, to attack players ahead of the release of Assassin's Creed Shadows. If you recall back in February of 2022, Rings of Power executives worked with Vanity Fair writers Anthony Bresnikan and Joanna Robinson to in, to attack fans of J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings, knowing that they had created uh, that what they had created was an abomination. Yeah, you got to just ruin everything. Don't give fans what they want. Give them what they don't want, and then blame them for not supporting it. Because apparently, these products deserve, and they they are entitled to viewership and purchases of course first the duo wrote when amazon released photos of its multicultural cast even without character names or plot details the studio endured a reflexive attack from trolls the anonymous online kind yeah it's all trolls the anonymous of bro i was one of them a way bigger profiles than mine like nerdrotic and stuff also really hammered this uh and it 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 faceless and in trolls i could name like a million billion people who weren't faceless and in trolls who pushed back with this and got more views than the actual show did all right, so then they cited a woman named Maria Rios Maldonado, who they described as a Tolkien scholar. However, she is anything but. Rather, she was a PhD student at the University of Glasgow who is interested in ethics, feminist theory, and encountering the other Tolkien's works. This is the same with Assassin's Creed Shadows in the fact that they hired their Japanese culture expert who instead really was uh, focusing on queer theory and gay crap. That was what she was an expert in, was gay crap, not actual Japan and Japanese history and all that. Uh, she also happened to be the equality and diversity officer for the University of Glasgow's Center of Fantasy and the Fantastic. She was used by Vanity Fair to attack Tolkien fans and imply that they are racist for simply wanting a lore-accurate adaptation. And the funny thing is the race swaps weren't even the most egregious. This show was just unwatchable. I mean, the race swaps certainly didn't help, but just saying. Uh, all right. Maldonado questioned, obviously there was going to be push and backlash, but the question is from whom? Who are these people that feel so threatened or disgusted by the idea that an elf is black or Latino or Asian? People want accurate source material stuff, dude. Why is it so hard? Make something new with your Latino and black 
hobbits and stuff. Make something new if you don't want to respect the source material. All right, so Ubisoft has done something similar with the New York Times and Small. Like Bresnikan and Robinson, Small wrote, Some gamers erupted over his appearance, convinced that the franchise, known for its immersive recreations of the past, had gone woke by including a black character in its depiction of 16th century Japan. He then claims that developers received personal attacks and death threats. How come we haven't seen any of these alleged death threats? They're, all, they're always the first people, oh, stop giving me the death threats. Stop giving me death threats. But they can't post them. All, us detractors who are complaining about the changes or or just the woke washing going on or the inserting all of this stuff, like for, for real, we're going to get an Assassin's Creed in Japan and people have been begging for this and you're giving us this? <laughs> Yasuke, who is was a real guy and who was not actually a samurai, and they're making him gay. Okay. Uh, yeah, and so then Japan, and that's what's funny, is they want to blame all of us. A lot of Japanese people, I mean, it's even escalated to the Japanese government, which I made videos about this, um... Uh, because they don't like this. They don't like that, uh, you know, if this was completely a work of fiction and they didn't pretend that it was based in reality or, oh, well, this is this is based off of the legendary samurai Yasuke. If they didn't push that kind of narrative, then it wouldn't be such a big deal. But the fact is Assassin's Creed prides itself in trying to be set in, in ac historical accurate times or, or uh, with, with their twist on it, if you will, um, with their story, but based in reality as well which isn't the case here and so then they're making uh a japan appear to be racist because they're not acknowledging yasuke and how much of a heroic and amazing samurai he was because you know apparently they need their history explained to them um so anyway <laughs> it's just not a good look and it's not just a bunch of avatarless anons that are mad about it um, he then claims developers, were, oh yeah, they received personal attacks during online harassment campaign to no surprise. He shares no evidence of such attacks or threats because they probably didn't exist. After attacking gamers, Small then weaves a false narrative that has already been refuted for months by citing historian Yu Hirayama, who is an admitted communist. Small cities or small sites Hiriyama's claim that it was without question that Yasuke was a samurai. There are very few historical documents about him, but there's no doubt that he was a samurai who served Nobunaga. However, it is highly disputed that he was a samurai as historian Yuichi Goza, who is a faculty member of the International Research Center for Japanese Studios, focusing on Japanese medieval history and the author of What is a Samurai?, speculated that Yasuke was simply Odu Nobunaga's bodyguard and, inter and entertainer rather than a samurai. He was asked by Japanese website, the Sankei Shimbun, what kind of person was Yasuke and was he a samurai or not? Goza responded, there are very few historical records about Yasuke, so it's difficult to say. The history of Yasuke has not been the subject of much research, in part because the history of personalities is not the mainstream of historical studies. In the 15 volume Nabunaga Koki, in the collection of Sankei Kaku Bunko, which is one of the biographies of Nabunaga's Nabunaga Koki, a chronicle of Nabunaga's life. There is a description of Nabunaga giving Yasuke a sword and a house, indicating that he treated him as a samurai. However, this is something that only appears in this biography among the dozens of manuscripts of the Nabunaga Chronicle. And we cannot deny the possibility that it was added later when the manuscript was transcribed. Goza continued also, even if he was a samurai, he may have been 
a formality. For example, in the Edo period, feudal lords who were fond of sumo had their own personal wrestlers. Formally, they were treated as vassals or samurai and allowed to wear a sword, but even if a war broke out, it was not expected that the feudal lords would allow their retainers to fight on the battlefield. Not only did Small cite the communist Hirayama, but like Vanity Fair with Maldonado, he cited Kazuma Hashimoto, who he describes as a Japanese consultant and translator in the video game industry. Hashimoto told Small, it was people in the West who were upset with seeing Yasuke as a samurai. Why are they lying? Why are they lying? Japan, like I said, it escalated even to their government. There was a massive change campaign for this as well, uh, largely led by the Japanese people. Oh, it's just Westerners. That's it. That's all who's upset. This is patently false and makes absolutely no sense given Small even admits that Ubisoft apologized to Japanese players. Well, it was a sorry, not sorry. I mean, it was, it was just... Yeah, I made a video about that as well. It's pretty pathetic. Small wrote, after the online blowback, a the game's development team attempted to assuage concerns about the game's authenticity, apologizing in a lengthy statement for promotional materials that it said had bothered some Japanese audiences. In fact, he even noted that a political party in Japan formally asked the government to comment on what it considered historical inaccuracies. Japanese YouTuber Shohi Kondo also explained a number of reasons why Japanese gamers are opposing the game and have signed a petition calling for Ubisoft to cease development on it. He said, we are protesting marketing DEIs, historical distortion stemming from their disregard for Asians and their arrogance, and discriminatory responses to protests from Japan. From there, he focuses his video on what he describes as the biggest attempt to distort history Japan that is the legendary samurai they claim Yasuke so anyway this is where we're at right now uh Ubisoft is definitely they have stepped in Duke and they have messed up in a number of ways uh they're gosh and this I love 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 some Ubisoft games some of the older ones the actual classic Splinter Cell games, for example, one of my favorite franchises of all time. So we see Ubisoft, who used to everything they touch turned to gold for the most part, and then now things have boiled down to this. Things have gotten so downhill uh, as of late, and it's really sad to see. I don't want to see Ubisoft fail. But at the same time, right now, they really have been hijacked by a bunch of woke ideologues, people who, uh, woke activists, it's just activists. They hire a bunch of activists. They had DEI hiring practices. They hired a ton of women. Um, and it's just been a uh, women and they thems. They even have their program now to mentor women and they thems. And it's only women and they, they thems, which is fake. We all know. Uh, who are allowed to participate in that. So they're not looking at all of their failures right now and saying, huh, maybe we're hiring a little bit too many queer activists right now. Maybe we're hiring a bit too many women right now, for example. Let's be real. Look at the actual gaming demographics. Who and, oh, but most gamers are women when they're counting grandmas playing Candy Crush. But Look at the gamers who are actually playing Assassin's Creed games, for example. You're going to have largely a male audience. So it only makes sense that you have that reflect the demographics in your studios because you want people who are actually interested in these games, in creating these games, and who are passionate about the gaming industry in general. And here in America, that is mostly going to be white dudes. It is what it is. Who cares what gender or color of the skin or what they're doing in their personal lives? I don't care. I, it doesn't matter. 
I just want people to make good games. And we haven't seen nearly as many good games these days. This is why a bunch of retro games are making such a huge resurgence because they're better than most modern games. Okay, so anyway, there you have it for this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. And if you want me to read the Bible to you, you can check out my Bible, cha my Bible channel, Bible Time with Melanie Mack. Thank you all again. I'll catch you next time. And in the meantime, go boom.